Welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be The Adventures of Wild Bill Hickok. Original air date is September 9th, 1951, and the title is Logging. Let's get into it. Hiya, folks. Hold on to your hats and pass those Kellogg's Corn Pops. Because here comes Guy Madison as Wild Bill and his pal Jingles, which is me, Andy Devine. We got another rootin' tootin' Wild Bill Hickok adventure story for you from that great new cereal with the sweetening already on it, Kellogg's Corn Pop! <laughs> Kellogg's Corn Pop brings you Wild Bill Hickok, transcribed in Hollywood and starring Guy Madison as Wild Bill and Andy Devine as his pal Jingles. <laughs> The call of trouble took United States Marshal Wild Bill Hickok with his big deputy Jingles throughout the West from the Canadian line to the Mexican border country. In the early fall of 1877, they headed south through Colorado after putting a stop to a Wyoming range war. A lazy Indian summer sun beat down on them as they walked their horses along a green river bank. It was time for talking, and Jingles was catching up on his history. Uh, Bill... Yeah, Jingles? Uh, how old is the United States? 101 years old this year. And this is 1877. That's right. The Declaration of Independence was signed in 1776. And Colorado was made a state in 1876. I know that much. Mm, that's pretty good, partner. And it's nice country around here, or hadn't you noticed? Oh, it sure is. Green pine trees and mountains. You know, Bill, <laughs> I'll bet that river down there is just squirming with fish. Mm, might be. Could you be throwing a suggestion at me? Oh, now, Bill, you know me better than that. Sure I do. But uh, uh, now that you mention it, I could put up with a good mess of tender trout just fried golden brown. Hey, let's slide off of these Bronx and try it, huh, Bill? Huh? Okay, partner. You know, it might be a good change from your sourdough biscuits and salt pork at that. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's turn right in here by the river. Oh, Joker. Whoa, oh, Buckshot. Whoa. Ah. Stand there, boy. Stand. I'm losing that scent strap. Hmm. Feels better, huh? Yeah, they like the rest, too. Oh, Joker. Now, oh. Well, I want to get those fish hooks I've been saving in this war bag. Now, let me see. Let me see. Oh, yeah. Here they are. You act like the first day school's out, Jingles. <laughs> I feel like I was playing hooky. Oh, a fishing we will go, a fishing we will go. I oh the Mario, a fishing we will go. Now who in thunderation is Bill? Bill, look. A Chinese in a canoe, a pigtail flying. Looks excited. Excited ain't no name for it. He's about to pop. Oh, help me! Help me! Jingles, he's in trouble. The current's got him. I'll swim out and head him off. Kick off them boots, Bill. Mm, they're off. Oh, Hang on, Charlie. I'm coming. Watch it, Bill. That's a strong current. Hey, Charlie. Stop beating that frying pan. Paddle for sure. Oh, I got it quick. You saved me, Missy Post, man. Me, no got paddle. Me, confusion. All right, Charlie. Save it. I got you now. Oh, oh thank you, please. Oh, very good. You saved me. I know got paddle. Quit jabbering. I'll try pushing you to shore. No, you no can do. You no can do. Here comes my rope, Bill. Catch the loop. All right, Jingles, heave it. Here it comes. Got it. All right, Charlie. Try this loop to your canoe. Oh, very good. Me make a try. No die this time. Maybe so go to ancestor by and by. That's got it. Okay, Jingles. All us in. I think it's more better. You get in canoe? No, I'll stay here in the water and guide it. Uh, won't be long now, Bill. Oh, thank you, please. Sally, pretty lady boss man. Thank you, please. You'll be all right now, Charlie. Well, there you are, Charlie. All safe and sound. Now, what's all this ruckus about, Charlie? Me, no, Charlie. Me, confusion. <laughs> You're telling me. You know, you scared all the fish away with that infernal beating on that frying pan, and just when I... Hey, hey, who's that? Who's what, Jingles? Uh, there, there in the bottom of the canoe. Looks like a young fella from the logging country by those denim britches and loggers camp. But, but, but what's the matter with him? You help a pretty lady boss man get a doctor chop-chop. Doctor? What's the matter with him, Charlie? Me, no, Charlie. Me, confusion. 
Me work in the big log camp up top river. Man, he make a hide in the tree. Boom, boom. Hit pretty lady boss man. Get the doctor. Chop, chop. Bill, this frying pan mauler ain't making much sense to me. Just a minute, Jingles. Maybe he is. Turn this young fellow over and let's have a look at him. Yeah, it's a cinch little Charlie Confusion wants a doctor quick and... Oh, hop and horn toads, Bill. That's no him. That's a her and she's been shot. <laughs> Hey, this story has your old pal Panhandle Jim on the edge of my chair eating Kellogg's corn pops as fast as I can grab them up. Now, come up close, like, and I'll tell you about corn pops. You can eat Kellogg's corn pops two ways. One way is right out of the box, like eat candy, just like I'm eating them now. Yes, sir, they're a real tasty snack with a sweetening already on them. Now, the other way to eat corn pops is out of the bowl with milk. But remember what I said about the sweetening. Don't go putting a lot of sugar on Kellogg's Corn Pops. They're already sweetened for you. Tasty, puffed-up hearts of corn all ready to go. They're not only good, but mighty good for you. But partners, they're a real two-gun, two-way cereal with B vitamins, vitamin D, with important minerals and food energy, too. That's important to all you young'uns who want to grow up big and strong. So if you aren't already settled back enjoying Kellogg's Corn Pops right now, eating them like candy right out of the box, you better sashay down the store tomorrow and get a load of them. Now, listen to this little saying. Kids love Pops, moms love Pops, and Pops love Pops. In a little while, we'll say it together. Right now, I'm busting to get back the show. How about you? <laughs> Wild Bill and Jingles discovered that the figure in the canoe was a girl and that she'd been shot. Without waiting to ask the excited Chinese any more questions, they rushed her downriver to a Harrisville doctor. Uh, oh, doctor, uh, Mrs. Jane, boss man, uh, no, die. Don't go, you uh, can go. No, let it die. No, no, Confucian, your Missy Jane, boss man, is not going to die. She's going to be all right. Oh, that right, Doc? Now, that's real good news. Yes, yes, the bullet must have been from a rifle. It went right through the fleshy part of the shoulder without stopping. No bones broken, then? Uh, no, Mr. Eacock. She was very lucky. Could we talk to you a minute outside, Doc? Well, certainly. Uh, what you got on your mind, Bill? Doc, you've known Miss Jane for some time, I take it. Why, yes. Uh, I've known the family since uh, Jane's father, Dan Klaus, started his logging camp above Thunder Rapids. You know of any trouble up there? No. No, but that bullet hole in Jane's shoulder says there is some. Well, why don't we ask Miss Jane, Bill? I reckon we will, partner. Might even do more than that. Well, I don't know what you have in mind, Mr. Recock, but it'd certainly be better if Jane had someone see her back up to Thunder Rapids. She will be ready to travel by tomorrow or the next day. Exactly what I had in mind, Doc. What do you say, Jingles? Well, you know, I, I was going to suggest it myself, Bill. And I just hope we run into the sneaking timber wolf that took a shot at that pretty little girl. I'll give him so much, he'll think he's got a grizzly by the tail. Well, here we are, gentlemen. Thunder Rapids Logging Camp. Whoa, Buckshot. Oh, Joker. Confusion doesn't care much for horses. You make a good cowpoke, Confusion. Oh, me, very good cowpoke. By and by, I go to buy guitar. You listen. Oh, belly me not. On the lonely palilelli, it is one guy no a young jala. Yeah, the, next to beating that frying pan, you, you're a born rustler. Oh no, confusion, no, no, rustly cow. Confusion, rustly chow. <laughs> you know, that's the kind of talk I like to hear. I could use a little chow right now, and that frying pan is music to my ears. <laughs> I had a pork chop or two in it. Jingles, wait till you're invited. Ho, ho, me and Mike A fix the pork chop, sure, boss. All right, Confusion. You go get us some supper. We'll go in the house. Yeah, yeah, all I do now. Come on, horsey. Come on, get your mouth. Good old Confusion. <sighs> He's the last friend I have in the world, I guess. Oh, now, ma'am, I wouldn't be talking like that. 
We're your friends, ain't we, Bill? We sure are, Miss Jane. Well, what you've done proves that all right. Seems to me there's more than needs doing. If you'd care to tell us about your trouble. Yes, ma'am. You ain't said much about it, you know. Well, come on in the house and Jane, I'll tell you... Jane, wait up. Who's that, Miss Jane? My cousin, Ralph. Jane, where you been the last two days? Confusion's gone, too. What do you mean, running off, not letting me know? Who are these men? Now, just a minute, mister. You may be a cousin, Hold but it, I don't... Jingles. Oh. This is Miss Jane's business. It's all right, Jingles. Ralph didn't know. No, didn't know what? Somebody shot me two days ago, Ralph, when I was working a team in the woods. Shot you? Yes. Confusion put me in a canoe and started downriver. These two gentlemen found him and took me to Dr. Bob in Harrisville. This is Wild Bill Hickok and his deputy, Jingles. Wild Bill Hickok? And Jingles. Howdy, mister. Maybe you can give us a line on who shot Miss Jane. Well, how would I know? I wasn't here. Didn't even know she was shot. Ralph had gone to find some more men to work for me. And I didn't find any. None of them want to work for a woman. And they're all afraid of Big Steve. And we'll never get those logs to the mill in time. No, and it's your own doing. Big Steve's going to get the railroad contract. You're going to lose your shirt. A woman's got no place in logging. Bill, do you know what they're talking about? Not entirely, Jingles, but I'm doing some guessing. You keep out of this, Hickok. It's a family affair. Seems to me that Miss Jane's a member of the family, too. And if she wants our help, she gets it. Well, if you want to do her a favor, tell her to let me go make the deal with Big Steve Munson. He's wanted to buy her out ever since Uncle Dan was killed. That's so, Miss Jane? Yes. Sure, it's so. And he'll get this logging outfit if he has to kill all of us to do it. I bet he's the one who shot you. Well, who is this Big Steve you're talking I'll about? I'll tell you who he is. He's just about the biggest man in these parts. Owns the Ridge Pine outfit upriver from us. He's bought off or scared off every man we ever had working here because he wants to run us out. I reckon a move like that takes it out of your hands, Miss Jane, and calls for the law to take over. Come on, Jingles. Where are we going, Bill? To call on this big Steve Munson and ask him a few pointed questions. Hey, cock, you're more knot-headed than I thought. When big Steve gets done with you, you'll think you've been run through a sawmill. <laughs> Bill, you reckon it was this big Steve that shot Miss Jane? I don't know, Jingles. But we might find out right soon. We're getting pretty close to this camp. Well, then we'd better be careful. If he's as mean as that cousin of Miss Jane says he is, we'd better... Whoa, Buckshot, whoa. Bill, some farmer's shooting at us. Through the trees. That way. Come on, let's go after him. You jump, Joker, through there. Hi, Buckshot. Bill, we can't make it on horses. These trees are too thick. Yeah, we better get off and leave them here. Whoa, oh, 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 hold, Joker. Stand there. Oh. Hey, Buckshot. Woo. We going to trail them through these trees, Bill? Sure. I want to know who's getting so loose with the rifle slugs. Well, it just might be the same sneaking weasel that shot Miss Jane. Could be the same, all right. Now, keep your eyes open, partner. Don't let him catch us off guard. I just hope he tries it again. Oh, Bill! Jingles. It's a grizzly. Now watch him. I'm looking at him, but he's looking at me, too. And, Bill, I don't think he likes me. Steady, partner. Bill, you reckon he's figuring out how he can make a rug out of me? Just stand still, Jingles. Maybe he'll go away. Well, one of us has got to go. This territory ain't big enough for the both of us. There he goes, Jingles. You scared him off. Yeah, I sure scared him. <laughs> How'd you do it, partner? Oh, huh? Oh, <clears throat> oh, I just looked him right in the eye and showed him I wasn't afraid of any little old bear. No, sir. All right, now that he's gone, let's get on with our business. Yeah, well, what business, Bill? Oh, yeah. Uh, we were chasing that coyote that took a pot shot at us, weren't we? You got a short memory. Yeah, here's the trail. Come on. Uh, B Billy turned here, see? Yeah, yeah, he's following the river. Hey, look, there's another camp ahead of us. Mm, I guess we came out of Big Steve Munson's. Yeah, stranger, I figure you have. Uh, 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 Billy's got a rifle. Yeah, Big Dumpy, and I'm right handy with it, too. Big Dumpy? I reckon we already know that, mister. Well, why don't you find out who people are before you start shooting? I ain't been shooting at nobody, but I'm liable to if you don't get off my property. You Steve Munson? Yeah. And you stand there with a rifle in your hand and claim you weren't shooting at us back there? Take a sniff of that rifle barrel if you want to know. But one false move and I'll blow your head off. 
Uh, Bill, he's right. This rifle ain't been fired. And you seen any strangers hightailing it through here? Nope. No strangers. Who are you to be asking me all these questions? No, he's just Wild Bill Hickok, that's who. Hickok? Well, now, why didn't you say so? <laughs> you didn't ask till then. We're not looking for trouble, mister, unless some of the things we've heard are true. Like what? Like that you've been running Miss Jane's Thunder Rapids men off the job with a gun. That's a lie. And that's right easy to say, mister. Don't get me riled, you big barrel of blubber. Oh, let me take him, Bill. I'll hold it, jump. Jingles, hold it. All right, Munson. <laughs> What about you and this trouble Miss Jane's been having? I don't know anything about it. If she went out of business, you'd get the railroad contract to furnish tires, right? Sure. But I offered to buy her out fair and square. And when she wouldn't sell, you shot her, too. Jingles? Shot her. Is she dead? I reckon if you did the shooting, you'll know the answer to that one, Munson. And if I can prove you did it, you can be looking for us back. Come on, Jingles. Yes, sir, mister. We'll be back, and you can just be looking for us. Shot Miss Jane, did he? Where till I get my hands on that sneaking poor cat? All right, you yellow patch lizard. Come out of there. What's the matter, Steve? No, stay. No, stay. Give me that rifle. Give me it. <clears throat> I ought to break your back. No, no, no. I heard what they said. Jane is all right. I didn't kill her. What did you shoot her for at all? Well, I didn't know it was her. She, she was dressed like one of the men. That's the truth, Steve. I told you no shooting, didn't I? Yeah, yeah, but you said if I got Jane to sell out to you, you'd give me half interest. Well, you can forget it. One more fool bonehead like that, and I'll turn you over to Hickok. No, no, no. Please, g g give me one more chance. I got one more ace up my sleeve, and that'll make a sell sure. All right. But no more shooting. No, no, no more shooting. When I get through with what I'm going to do tonight, you can plan on starting your logs down river at sunup tomorrow. And that's a promise. Hello there. I got something to say to you young wranglers about Kellogg's Corn Pops. A wonderful eating cereal that's already sweetened for you. Now listen close here. Corn Pops are hearts of corn, all puffed up big and crisp, with plenty of tasty sweetening on them. You can eat Kellogg's Corn Pops the way I eat them when I listen to Wild Bill Hickok, right out of the box by the handful, just like candy. But come breakfast time, pour them out in a bowl and add a little milk. But don't go putting any sugar on Corn Pops. <laughs> no, sir, because like I just said, Kellogg's Corn Pops already got the sweetening right on them. Every single Corn Pop. If you're eating them right now, look at the bag inside the box. It's pure aluminum. Keeps Kellogg's Corn Pops fresh up to ten times longer. And your mom can use it for storing things in the refrigerator or for carrying sandwiches in. Now, don't go fussing with one box of Corn Pops. Get your mom to load up big. Then out of the box or out of the bowl, you can have all the Kellogg's Corn Pops you want. And you want plenty. Now, all together, let's tell everybody who loves Corn Pops. Kids love Pops. Moms love pops, and pops love pops. <laughs> now you're talking. Let's hustle on back to the show. Not being convinced of either Big Steve Munson's guilt or his innocence in causing the trouble at Thunder Rapids, Wild Bill and Jingles return to talk to Jane Klaus. It's after dark when they sit down at Jane's log hut headquarters. Miss Jane... When are your logs due at the mill downriver? Tomorrow night. If I want to collect on my contract, that's 22 miles. Well, Miss Jane, we saw your logs all stacked on the river bank. Why don't you just cut them loose and let them float down? And they jam up. Then I'd never get them to the mill. And I don't have the men to ride them down. Looks like I'm out of business. Maybe we could ride those logs downriver for you. Me ride a log down the river? <laughs> Bill, you gone local? It would take more than two men, Bill. And good experienced men at that. Driving logs down Thunder Rapids is worse than driving a stampeding herd any day. Oh, this sure is a mess, Bill. If Miss Jane doesn't get her logs down there by tomorrow, Big Steve will get the contract and his logs are sure What to... was that? More shooting, and at this time of night, nobody's hunting jackrabbits. Help! Help, Mr. J. Wild Bill, help! That's confusion yelling. Yeah, there he comes, bent for leather. Oh, Mr. Hickok! Oh, come in quick, down by river, chop, chop. What is it, Confusion? What's happened? Who's doing that shooting? Oh, very bad. Him shoot at me. Me catch him down by log pile. My logs? Somebody's trying to... But what can they do? Come on, Jingles. That's what we're going to find out. Who do you reckon it is, 
Bill. I'm not sure, Jingles. But whoever it is, he's bad medicine for Miss Jane. Doggone that varmint, he can't see us. No, but I saw his gun flash. You want me to smoke him out, Bill? No, hold your fire. I want to see what he's up to. Jumping hop toads, Bill, that was dynamite. Yeah. Hey, listen. Hey, uh, Miss Jane's logs. She said to jam up in the river. Yeah. We've got to stop him before he sends any more down. Bill! Bill, those are my logs! Stay back, Miss Jane. Come on, Jingles. Bill, we don't want to tangle with that dynamite. No, but I'm sure I can go tangle with that Jasper that's setting it off. Bill! Yeah, partner. Come on, hurry it up. Well, there he is buried under the logs. Reckon his sins caught up with him, Bill. Yeah, I guess you're right, Jingles. It's Miss Jane's cousin, Ralph. Yeah, and all the time I thought it was that big Steve Munson. And all the time it looks like you were wrong, blubberhead. Munson! What are you doing here, Munson? I figured this polecat was up to something, and I followed him. And he was doing... Just figure out you made a slip, huh, Munson? No, no, I meant to say You meant that... to say you followed him because he was at your camp and we were there. And the reason he was dynamiting those logs was to get that railroad contract. Then Big Steve was behind it. Well, he'll never get to tell anybody. You sidewinder. Bill got your gun, but now I'm going to get you. No, Jingles. No, oh, I've got another job for him. What are you talking about, Hickok? You're going to help us get Miss Jane's logs to the mill. Now, come on. <laughs> All right, Jingles. Lass those two logs together. Got you, partner! What's that big one, Hickok? I see it, Munson. Look out, Bill! Use that tight pole! Okay, Jingles. That's the last one. Straighten it up. There she goes! No more log jam! Sawmill, here we come! Well, Miss Jane, I reckon your troubles are all over now. Yeah, Big Steve's going to be put away for a long spell. (laughs) Boy, was he sore when Bill made him help get your logs down to the mill. Well, you and Bill did most of it, Jingles, and I don't know how I can ever thank you enough. Not at all, Miss Jane. We're just glad your men came back to work and everything turned out all right. Well, I, I wish you'd both stay on. I could use a couple of good loggers like you. Oh, no, ma'am. I'm going back to the desert, and the nearest thing to one of those big logs you're going to catch me with is a little bitty toothpick. (laughs) And now, here are the stars of Wild Bill Hickok, Guy Madison, and Andy Devine. Andy and I will be back again next week with another story for you. So be with us, will you? Yes, sir. We got a humdinger, too. If it's gun smoking action you're hankering for, we got it. Meanwhile, we also hope you remember to get Kellogg's Corn Pops. Right. It's a great new cereal with the sweetening already on it. You bet it is. Andy and I think Corn Pops are great. So long. See you next week. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, sir, be sure to listen next week at this same time on this same station when Kellogg's Corn Pops brings you another exciting story of Wild Bill Hickok, starring Guy Madison and Andy Devine in person. Today's cast included Gene Vanderpile, Anthony Barrett, Jim Nusser, Charlie Long, and Jack Moyles. Our director is Paul Pierce. Music by Dick Orant. This is a David Heyer production transcribed in Hollywood. This is Charlie Lyon reminding you, kids love pops. Moms love Pops. Pops love Pops. Kellogg's Corn Pops.
This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com, and we hope you enjoyed. Please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel by going to otrwesterns.com slash YouTube. And send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. You can call and leave us a voicemail, 707-986-8739. This episode is copyright under the attribution non-commercial share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day, and thanks for listening.